Here we go, we are recording. We're on location. Charlie Hula is behind the camera, and we are now, and this is a special moment, we are into season eight of my podcast, The Foyne Jones Show. This season, on every episode, we're going to be talking from the ground up. So, why not record the first episode with our sponsors, ET Clay? David Blitz at the home of Leighton Orient Football Club. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brisbane Road. Welcome to Leighton Orient. And as I said earlier, when we were recording pitch side, I sound like I'm off the telly then, don't I? When we were recording pitch side, Charlie, we're in East, East, East London. We're in East, East, East London. So, this episode, it's, a, it's going to be a podcast of two halves. Episode one we're filming today. We're going to talk about the amazing work that David Blitz and his business, E.T. Clay, do with the local community and the football club. We'll talk about what the wider group are, are up to in terms of their sponsorship and uh, being linked. I see, I see you're away having it off in Amsterdam last week, mate, at the, uh, at the darts. Not, not a good choice of words. But not yeah. a good choice of words, but there you go. He's having some fun for the listeners there watching the darts. So, we talk about about the wider group, we talk about the industry and we talk about opportunities for people like you who are listening and watching this podcast. How are you, David? All good, yeah, really good. Family um, well? Yeah, not too bad actually. Good. Yeah, played a bit of football yesterday for the boys, so they were they were happy, they won. Yeah. So uh, yeah, good good start to the weekend. And you still coaching? Yes, yeah, so yeah. We're two two out of two now, so uh Oh, isn't it? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Eight he, goals. Charlie, no, he's the special one. Eight, <laughs> eight goals scored, no, no goals conceded. So, yeah, we're doing okay. Okay, doing okay, mate. That's good. Away from football, family okay? Yeah, yeah, we're Brilliant. doing okay. Brilliant. Doing okay, so, so let's, let's talk about where we are today. So, so we're at Leighton Orient. Yes. Um, Real, real club embedded in this community. Absolutely. Um, I remember their their arrival into the football league as a young fan myself, and I've travelled there to watch Fulham play you know, several times back back when we were in the same divisions. Um, but for you, you've got really strong links with Leighton Orient, haven't you? Yeah, I've been coming here. This is our fourth season as part of the um, support and uh, sponsorship we do with Leighton Orient. Um, but as a kid, I came here. I think my first ever game was here, sitting behind the, the goal, or standing behind the goal, which is ironically where I sit now with my two boys. Um, you used to sit on the other side as well, where the uh, original um, tunnel was. Uh, and now when it's hospitality time, I sit in yeah. the soft padded seats and uh, get to watch from the halfway it's, line. It's quite, nice. it's quite nice hospitality. I mean, the game's defi- the ground's definitely evolved since the yeah, last yeah, time absolutely. I was here. Yeah. Um, we were saying when we were pitch side. Yeah. You know, so I keep saying, Mention I've got to stop, again. Got to stop saying that. <laughs> we, 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 were that, we were saying earlier, I, I worked it out that it was in the uh, Mickey Adams promotion season for Fulham, which, okay. is, uh, which in my football journey was the first time Fulham weren't rubbish. You know, and we we weren't that good. You know, we were still in we were still in the old fourth division, but I think yeah. it was called the third division then. Um, Ray Wilkins, uh, God rest his soul, was playing for was playing for Leighton Orient, and um, you know he was still a kind of a, a celebrity yeah. type player back then. And uh, yeah, we we nicked a we nicked a result, and it was very famous for um, there was a old centre half Fulham had again, you know, a lower league centre half called Terry Angus. Ooh, Terry Angus. Ooh, Terry Angus. Ever heard of him? No, we had a Terry Howard and no. had the same song. Ter- Ter- yeah, I mean, there you go. <laughs> Ter- Terry Angus was a Fulham and Northampton Town legend, mate. Okay. That, 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 was, that was it. But let me tell you about Ter- Terry Angus, what made him special in that day. He was sitting, uh, so Fulham had sold out the old weigh-in, which was uh, uncovered yep. behind that goal. Yep. And we had probably those three sections there. Okay. So, and we had them, and, and so we had the seats in that. Because it was it kind of, we were, getting to the, we were getting to the business end of the season, yep. and we were, we were pushing for promotion. Terry was injured, and he was sitting, around, uh, sitting, sitting within the fans. And there was like, Terry, give us a song. Terry, Terry, give us a song. And you never know what the player's going to do, yeah, do you? Yeah. Do you know How what I mean? React, and yeah. he got up and he was like, we love you. For... And, and from that moment, he, his cult status become even, even more so. And it's one of those, it's another one of those true moments, like with who put the ball in the Carlisle net. Yeah. If you're a Fulham fan of a certain age, or if you've got family who were uh, embedded in the club during yeah. that journey, they will tell you it was Rodney Macquarie. Do you know what I mean? And they will tell you that it was a goal at Carlisle. That moment again when Terry Angus when Terry Angus did that, full and folk folklore. We've got another one, Conroy from the halfway line, when Super Mickey Conroy um, scored from the halfway line against Wickham in the yeah. Coca-Cola Cup. Again, it means nothing to anyone unless you were there. 
I was there. You were there. And, and then moments. So I've got, I've got good memories of Leighton Orient. Um, we may or may not talk about a bad memory I've got of Leighton Orient. We may or may not. Uh, yeah. We may bring that up later. But but tell me about, 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 about the club itself, mate. How's it doing? It's a couple of promotions lately, isn't there? Yeah, so we've... Um, there's been a promotion, sorry. Yeah, there's been a uh, promotion. So we're now in League One. Um, we've got Richie Wellings in charge, who's doing a, a brilliant job. Yeah. Really uh, a fan's favourite. Um, Are you advising him at all on his strategy? No, no, no. He has, uh, I think I said last time he still doesn't ask me anything. No. So, which is, uh, you, you want to tweet him and tell him we've got your 100% record, mate? I know, I know. That, that will go down well. <laughs> um, had a real tough start to the season, uh, similar to last year, actually. We played um, Charlton, uh, we had Bolton, we had Birmingham, so had some real big teams. Mm. Um, we won at the weekend, which was good. Um, so, that was a, a good result. We've got a game on Tuesday, then we've got the. Uh, the money men of Wrexham here next Saturday. Oh, there you go, showbiz. Um, yeah, so yeah, so there'll be um, a lot of uh, fake tan and. Uh, did you did you, did you reckon they bring the entourage that they took to Birmingham the other night? Because that was a, that, that was a full lineup. That was a full yeah, squad, I, wasn't I, it? it was yeah, I think, I think there'll be a lot of people. There'll be a lot the of people. Up, there? <laughs> there'll be a lot of people here, and it'll be, yeah. it should be a good atmosphere. It's a Saturday game, so there'll be uh, a lot of things to sell out. Mm. So everything, every seat is sold. Um, and yeah, on the back of two wins, we had a, an away trip to Brentford in the uh, in the cup, um, which I think is probably the best I've seen us play for a long yeah, time. But we're not actually not allowed to mention Brentford in our podcast. Okay, yeah. so, so, so we, we just played, just we played this other team yeah, in that yeah, part yeah. of the world. Yeah, uh, so, yeah bus, bus stop in Hounslow, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so yeah, so we, we had a good good performance. Unfortunately, the result didn't go away, but sitting with the away fans, my two boys, and my father-in-law, it was a yeah, really really good evening. Hmm. So yeah, good, good fun and yeah, they're, they're doing they're doing okay. I think this season will be again top top eight finish, um, and maybe maybe. The, the, the thing with the thing with the, with the thing with the, the, the leagues you know, below the Premier League with the playoffs is you've always got something to to, yeah. to dream yeah, for. Absolutely. You know, you've always got something to dream for. Yeah. I remember when Fulham were a very average team in the Championship and um, Savisi so Kanovic he signed uh, Alexander Mitrovic yeah. and he signed Adam Target and that meant. Ryan Sessegnon, who we talked about earlier, could yeah. could play further up the pitch. Yeah. We went on a 23 game unbeaten run and nicked our way into the playoffs, and yeah. then won them. And that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what you do. You, it's it's about the momentum. It's about the getting results all together in one hit, mm. ideally towards the back end of the season to give you that push to get to the uh, the playoff spot. But we'll see how we see how we go this year. It's been it's a, it's a really enjoyable um, place to come. The kids love it. Um, the football's good. The interaction between the players and the fans is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, my kids constantly scream for the shirts. They, they haven't got to the stage of bringing the, no. the, the cards, no. can I have your shirt, but they scream constantly. <laughs> I, I give a little scream occasionally. Uh, but no, it's, it's brilliant, yeah. really great club. I mean, we, we just, Charlie and I just 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 arriving today from from eventually finding the underground car park, which I missed four <laughs> times. Um, but but then once once we once once we got in, uh, the welcome has been brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, the, the like have a look brilliant. around. Bring, yeah. you, you're bringing it to life, and actually seeing what goes on in a football club on non-match days yeah. is is a very different experience. Yeah. And uh, I, I I grew up. You know, like very, very close to Craven Cottage. Yeah. You know, so, so, so it was something that I saw almost every day. You know, yeah. it was, it was always there, um, and it comes to life on match day. And I imagine when, when, when the money men, when the money men, money men, money men of North Wales, when Wrexham come, yeah. that day, that is going to be a buzz about the place. Yeah. And it's what you want. No, you, absolutely. You, those moments are what, what can transform the club as absolutely. well. You get a result there, well, you build on. Well, yesterday they had uh, Spurs ladies who play their games here at the moment, and um, so had all the hospitality going on yeah. there. The, the guys were all in, getting it all ready for tomorrow's uh, game so again they'll be working to get the pitch get the the ground looks won't amazing water in, mate, look. no yeah. it's, uh, it's off again but the, <laughs> the pitch looks phenomenal and um, the facilities are great they're doing lots of work behind the scenes they're trying to um, develop the stands and do as much building work as they can without having to physically move the ground mm. um, and yeah the improvements are there it's, it's that it's that oh, see modern stadium I, I think for 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 for, for Keeping yourself in your own lane and yeah. making it fit for purpose, I think this this football club right now on the ground is fit for purpose. Yeah. I think it's I think it's been developed brilliantly. The, the, it depends how you look at it. Like the, if you move it's, modern stadia, you know, it's it's a progression, isn't it? You, yeah. you you need to progress in 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 football. We spoke about sort of the the money coming into clubs, mm. and you spoke about your club and the the money or the the fans coming in to watch the, the games. You need that money, you need that revenue to to generate more things coming into the club and. You know, we need to fill the stands, we need to fill it up on a regular basis to then progress to what that other team in West London have got, which is sort of mm. 16,000, 18,000 capacity. And that will 
enable the club to, to yeah. grow again and go to the next stage. But it's a champion championship team, almost, but the stands are, yeah. are not there yet. And, and, and that, that dream can happen. You know, I, I grew up, again, this is going back to, to me and Fulham, but, but I grew up watching Fulham in the old Division 3 and the old Division 4. Yeah. You know, they, they may have slightly changed their numbers, but yeah. if you look at the tier and one being the Premier League, that was it, and, and Craven Cottage was falling down. We, we nearly lost it. We nearly become Fulham yeah. Park Rangers. We, you know, we we, we finished. We, we we had to win a game to stay in the football league. We lost, and someone lost by more goals. All that all that yeah. type of stuff. But Fulham Craven Cottage falling down. You know, you'd be lucky to get four thousand fans. Yeah. Um, we we progressed. We yeah. we've we've got ourselves with investment, and it yep. was with money. Yep. Um, probably best to keep 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 the name and yeah. the fella out of this podcast right quickly, now. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, <laughs> that's that's what you need when you wake up on Saturday morning and you got like 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 the Saturday morning. Uh, News is on, and you're going, why, why full of money? Yeah, why, 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 we've, 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 we've only got Newcastle, why are we on there? Oh no, you know, and he goes, oh no. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think from, from, from the progression, we, we, had that, we had a season when uh, we were in the Premier League and we ground shared with QPR because we were developing yeah. our ground, getting it, getting it fit for purpose yeah. again. You know, because we, we had standing and you couldn't have standing no. in the Premier League. They let yeah. us have it for one season, um, but that was it. And, and those two years when we had to go to Shepherd's Bush instead of going to Craven Cottage were, were really tough. It just didn't feel right. Okay? It didn't feel right at all. Ironically, we had a pretty decent home record there, which was strange. But, but when you come back to the ground and you're looking at it, that's where we are. Yeah. Um, Fulham have gone big, big, big with their new Riverside yeah. stand. Um, they're making it a VIP experience if you want it. Yeah, yeah no, they, yeah. they are. You know, there's affinity pools, there's spa days, there's fine dining, David. But, but fine dining. It, know. You know, there are fine dining it options. Cut them with your, with your pie. Honestly, and, and the entry point for that, I think it's the most expensive ground in London. Yeah. Now, should we be that? I don't know. But, it, but it's not just what happens on the pitch. So you can invest in the players. Yeah. It's everything behind the scenes. So what <coughs> we've got here, mm. before you got here, I was chatting to Mark Devlin, who's mm. the CEO, but also was at Brent, yeah. that team in West London before. And he sees this as a perfect progression for where they were and where they are now. And all ain't doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. So we are, we're slowly building it. And it's about having... But yeah, this is where, the, this it's is about where, having the, the, is, the grassroots, not just on the pitch. This is where, like, you know, through, this is where the club's got to believe, though, right? Yeah. Because you know, because ultimately, it's part of the East, East End community. Yeah. It's always had that loyal fan. Yeah, that I'm not West Ham. I'm yeah. not Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. I'm Leighton Orient. Yeah. They've always had that fan base, yeah. and, and I like that. Yeah. But if we go back again a few years, Fulham, Brentford, Brighton, yeah. and Leighton Orient. Yeah. Right, we're all we're playing, playing in Division Four. Yeah, yeah. They were all playing yeah. in Division Four. Brighton were at the with Dean. Yeah. Well, they might not. Yeah. That's where I'm on my sports day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's called sports day. Tonight, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 you, so, so, you look at that, right? Yeah. They were playing. They were playing each other home and away. Three of those teams I mentioned there are now yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Brighton have just been to Europe. Fulham went, went away European final. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, Brentford have, have, have kind of never been, never really been troubled with no, relegation no. since they got themselves up. A lot of that's their home fault, yeah. right? A lot of that's home fault. So why can't a club like Orient do it? No, but I think linking this to the business element, it's about running a club as a business. Yeah. And the problem is too many clubs go out and spend a huge amount of money on players, like go and mm. spend a huge amount of money on staff and not doing the things behind the scenes, giving the support and the mechanisms to do what they need to do. And you can throw, you know, you can throw money at players um, and that's part of it, but you do need to have the, the stuff below, below ground to get everything happening from, from the coaching to the management. And one thing we hope or we can do here, and have done it by giving long-term contracts to the, the coaching staff, is really support the management. And the, the board are brilliant very, very um, vocal, very vocal um, with the fans, that they're involved in what's going on, they're constantly walking around the stadium when things are happening. But it's, it's just important that they give time to the management, because the worst you can do, and we've seen it with teams like Watford, that went every season changing the manager, yeah. and it worked to a point, and now mm. they re they're relegated. You know, Chelsea have gone through a the other team won't make we had, we had two of those Watford managers. We've yeah. still got one. Yeah. We've still got one. But that, but that's it. But we that's had to beat them as well. Yeah, but that's it with regards to mm. sort of like the Chelsea scenario. They've rotated the manager so much. Even my, my real team, Tottenham, with 
we've rotated man just saying sorry Charlie. Did you see, so Charlie, 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 Charlie just, 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 just went angry then, edit, didn't he? Edit. I mean, we will. I tell you what. I tell you what. For, for the benefit, of, for the benefit of, of, of keeping the podcast true to its roots, right? We will talk about our respective football teams yeah. and, and what what's been happening. So we'll get we'll talk to Hula about the Arsenal. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Orient might be overtaking Tottenham in your world, mate. I don't. I yeah, don't the, know. The, the boys. You know, I'm, I'm accused of having too many football teams as a, as a kid, but my my. my, my my boys are very much, they love coming here. They love, yeah. all they want to talk about is when, what away game we're going to, Dad. Can yeah. we go to this one? Can we go to that one? My son was desperate, desperate to go to Millwall away in the cup. Mm. I was desperate not to, so we didn't. Mm. Uh, but, you know, he, he, he loves it. They both love it, to be fair, and they love mm. everything this... Football is, is their thing. It's, it's such amazing how uh, football progresses. Like, like, I remember watching Fulham in the lower leagues and I'm like, I'd love to play Millwall one day. I'd love to go down Cold Blow Lane. I'd love to go to Millwall. I'd love to play QPR. Why can't yeah. we ever play QPR? Yeah. Like, you know, they were like the big club. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, it's just and how, how, how it rolls. Yeah. It's mad. Like Palace, we never would play Palace. Yeah. So, so you look at it now and you, and you think, yeah, there's, there's so much to talk about. So, so what we'll do is we will talk about our football teams we, we, we want to talk about what your business is doing here as well yeah. and what you get out of it. Because yeah, I think absolutely. there's a, you know, when we're saying this season, this podcast is from the ground up. And I think actually what we do as a business in our sector, what we do with our employees, what we do with our customers, yeah. you, you can start building experiences in there and you can really look at career progression, development of relationships and, and investing into something which gives back to the community, I think it's absolutely, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Look, uh, as if on cue, look, you mentioned the Papa John stand and it's, it's, flashing, <laughs> away, it's flashing away over there in the corner. That that's penalty comes up every time yeah. you mention the, the bus stop in Hounslow, mate. That's what <laughs> happens there. And, and I do apologise, of course I do, to all, the, all of the Brentford fans that listen to this podcast, but you're not very nice about Fulham, so you've just got to let me have my, you've got to let me have my say when I can. So, so let's talk about the relationship here it's been going four years ETK yeah, it's fourth season um, and it has been brilliant we've had a, the, t- the team here uh, we started the team was very different within uh, late tonight a couple of people moved on we're now working very close with Pa who you met this morning yeah. lovely lovely guy top lad he, he, he joked that he's not, he works 24-7 and he does I sent him a message yesterday afternoon because did you forget I, we were I, coming did you no, forget no, the book <laughs> no it, it was about um, the the um, presenting the award for, yeah. the, for the game, just wanted to check who won this and what does that. But again, he didn't ignore me, he didn't say I'll speak to you Monday, he gave me all the information and it, yeah, mm. the, the, the club, the support we get from them is brilliant. Uh, the team, again, behind the scenes that liaise with my PA to make sure that tickets are organised, um, food requirements are sorted, all the, all the silly things that mm. I don't sort of remember very often, um, that's all sorted out without me worrying about. But the support and the, the work we do with the club is brilliant and to be able to bring not just customers, because they're important, but I think the one thing I've made, wanted to do, and it's something I'm, I'm keen to continue to do, is bring suppliers, because mm. customers are fundamental. Without customers, we have nothing. However, in the same way, without suppliers, without supporting our suppliers, and it's always nice to be taken away with a supplier and going to watch United, which I'm doing next weekend, um, or going out and playing golf with suppliers, it's great, but I do like to try and give something back to suppliers. I, I had a very prawn sandwich experience at, at, United. at, at Old Trafford yes. at the first game of the season. Yeah, I was hanging out with Fred the Red Charlie. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. And there, there are there are photos of me, my son Harry and Fred the Red. And yeah, and yeah no, we, we were we were invited by, our, by by the sponsors of the last series, by yeah. Carousel. Yeah. And, um, and we had a fantastic time. I stayed yeah. up in Salford um, yeah. because it was a Friday night game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so it made sense to stay up. And... Um, yeah, there's, there, I'll show you. There's a video that uh, the, 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 the the client took, and it's um, it shows you the whole of the ground erupting in the 87th minute. I can imagine. And, yeah. and there's two two, two people sitting lap. down, just <laughs> smiling. And there's a there's a lad. He's a lovely fellow. He's an ex-player, and um, he played lower leagues. And, I, and he said, he, and uh, he had his boy with him. He's yeah. both, you know, his boy's first Man United game. Yeah. So he was standing next to me. And there's a lovely bit in the video where he kind of like he just taps me on the show. He says, "Don't worry, mate." Like that, you know. And it's, uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> It was, it was, yeah. Watching your, your team away from home when you sit in the home end is, yeah. is tough. It, it is, I mean, I was in. I was as I said when you're in the when you're in the hospitality experience, yeah. it, it, it softens exactly. the blow. Yeah. It softens yeah. the blow somewhat. And what I and, and you talk about football being a global game. 
I was talking to a family from Malaysia. Yeah. I was talking to a guy who brought yeah. his two lads, same age as your boys, yeah. you know, same age difference as my boys. Yeah. I was talking to, you know, and, and like my, 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 my son was talking, saying, yeah, but dad, like, I was spoiled. Like, you just took me for full um, like, yeah. since I was like, like three, yeah. four. You, you, yeah. I've always gone home and away. These, these, these two boys, they flown from Sydney. Wow. Right, this is their like dream yeah, to go to this yeah. game, and I was just sitting there talking to their dad about it, and I'm like, he's going, this is this is like this is everything for us because yeah. um, you know we we follow the club from afar, and that's when you you, you realise the the power of the the, the super clubs yeah. and, and the the brands, and and it, and it is different, but I think the feel I get here is that the club is embedded in its community, yeah, and actually so. you get some momentum going. It yeah. can be it can be a real success story. I mean, it's in the shadows of of, of the Olympic Stadium. It's in the, it's yeah. in the shadows of everything, isn't it? So 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 it's got a, it's got to hold its own. And I think if you you get this ground full every week and the results go well, it's going to be rocking, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the one thing that was that was always when I used to come as a kid, as a as a, a, a local and as a Spurs fan back then, there was always. West Ham, Arsenal, said the A word, Tottenham fans, Chelsea fans would all come here to watch mm. Orient when yeah. their teams were away. And I think we still, you still get that, but you've now got people that their parents did it and now they've become Orient fans. So we, we, we've got involved in Orient, not because of my love for the club, but because of Eddie and mm. E.T.'s uh, love for the club and been a season holder when he was a kid and home and away for lots and lots of seasons. And the opportunity to sponsor the club was, was, was available and it was almost a no-brainer. Mm. It was a great opportunity um, to be able to put Eddie's company, ET, logos all over the all over the stands. And it was great. We, we, we opted not to be the stadium sponsor or the uh, front of kit sponsor, but we went for the, uh, the thing that was within our budget uh, mm. and became Golden Up sponsor. And we're seeing some good goals. We did have one month. Um, no goals scored. We had no, no goals. We had, we had two terrible months. Uh, one month when there was no goals. Get your goals. money back. No, I should have done it, actually. There was no goals scored. That was a tough month to try and uh, justify. And then there was one where they were playing. They weren't doing well. They were dropping down the table. This is before they got yeah. promoted, before Richie turned up. And Darren Prattley. Ex Fulham, mate, yeah. He's been around for yeah. years. He's a Fulham kid. He's brilliant, brilliant. Fulham guy. kid. He got a goal a month. And the reason he got goal a month, because it was the only goal that month. Oh, so we went okay. from zero okay. goals to one goal. Um, and it was it was almost a bit hostile here. So we gave the award after the game. After the game. On the pitch just down there. And while we're giving the award, he's a lovely, lovely guy. You've got sort of fans moaning and groaning and <laughs> shouting if you were. Um, <laughs> Not so kind words yeah. down to down to him, not to me, obviously, but down to Darren Bradley. But yeah, look, it's 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 been a, a roller coaster. Uh, when we took over, or when we took over, when we started getting involved in the club, the first season, we almost got relegated. Um, and I was like, oh, I've, I've made a mistake here. This isn't going to work. Second season promotion, uh, third season uh, sort of mid-table, really good year, really good season, lots of fun. Away to Stevenage, one-one nil. Um, and then sort of the, the fourth season now, and mm. we'll see where we go. Mate, it's a journey. It's a it journey. Really is, it's, yeah. it's, it's been a journey. So in the next half of the podcast, what we get, what we do, Dave, we talk, we talk about your business. Perfect. We talk about how it how it feels for you and the company at the moment. What what you've been focusing on, and not just in not just in ET Clay, but obviously with the wider group as yep. well. And we talk about opportunities for people listening to this show in terms of how the sector's progressing and what it's going to look like in the future. But the sun's come out again, Charlie. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I honestly want to get my boots on, which 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 uh, I don't think they're going to let me have a kick around out there. But maybe do a few keep me ups or something, Charlie. Would you rather be? head tennis who knows thanks for listening that's the first half of episode one of the Foyne Jones show season eight from the ground up sponsored by ETK we'll see you after the break When it comes to bricks, there's only one company to speak with. ET Clay have something for every brick project. With over 400 products across our two depots, we are the builder's merchant, brick merchant.
Welcome back to the Foyne Jones Show. We've been reminiscing about football during the break, and uh, you know I can see Dave whipping the ball in and me rising like a salmon, <laughs> bang, pushing it in there. Charlie being busy around in midfield, mate. You know he's probably sent off. Yeah, two yellows, mate. Two yellows. Oh, and he kicked the ball away in disgust. Do you know what's really good, Dave? He ain't got a microphone, so he can't say anything back. No one can hear him. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But you, you've got, uh, you've, you've banged it in the net a few times here, haven't you? I have, yeah. yeah. So um, I think our first season was that a kids' game, or was it? Jeez. <laughs> uh, our, our first season, they did a. Um, I think they've done it every season. I've only yeah. had to play once. Um, yeah, so I played, scored two goals down down that end. Um, could have scored probably twenty two goals down that end, <laughs> but I scored two, so I was very happy. We played against. Um, so back in the day, uh, Harry Kane um, used to sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Foundation, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so yeah. what? So what he did was brilliant. He, he paid for the sponsorship for the uh, for three charities to be the front of kit sponsors for three seasons. So a phenomenal thing to do, um, and enabled people like Haven House Hospice yeah. um, to have their company name, company information on the front of the shirt. That's brilliant. Sure, um, and his brother, who's his agent, mm. uh, played. Um, he's a lovely guy. Um, you can see where the, the skill level went. So yeah. it was okay. He scored a penalty yeah. in, in pure Kane fashion. Uh, but yeah, Harry Kane's obviously got got a little bit more talent. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. I, I remember um, I remember playing at Cone Cottage in a charity game. Scored yeah. a pen. Yeah. Uh, pen. I mean, yeah. It was, my, it was my it was my charity one game. Of, one of thirty-four. It was my, it was my, oh, oh, here we go. Here we go, mate. Do you know what I mean? That, that penalty shootout against Preston North End just went on and on and on. A few of my pals were up there, like, yeah. and I'm going, like, oh my we're gonna God. Go. You know? Yeah, I was happy just watching it on, on, on the, the telly. Table, Even watching yeah. it on the telly, I'm getting a bit bored. But <laughs> as I said, yeah, the only thing I was, I was so anxious about was I didn't want Ryan Sessing not to miss. Yeah. And he scored both of yeah. these, so it was all right. But, but I guess from a, from a wider industry perspective yeah. you know you've got these opportunities from yeah. for me for et clay and for brickability and you you're, you're bringing your customers you're bringing your suppliers yeah. um at the moment every every single person i think who's listening to this who's in our sector so the supply of building materials the supply of construction materials that industry itself they're under pressure it's been a difficult passage of play mate so it's a yeah. kind of football praise isn't it it's, no, been, it's it been a challenge it's, this year it's, it's been it's been tough i think this this year and last year have been really tough and i think we've we have to be a little bit realistic if i'm honest um that we've gone through the covid period which was crazy which was horrible and had never go through anything like that again but the the, the sector um i think it's right we're benefited from what happened in that time mm -hmm. Um, construction continued. The government put a lot of emphasis on construction to make sure that didn't stop, didn't stop the economy growing and things like that. And then we had the two years of craziness where you could almost, in, in the brick world, you could almost, I could sell almost anything. Uh, you could sell anything that's made of clay, it was about that big, and you could sell it quite easily. And manufacturers and um, customers and suppliers. It's, it's now changed and now it's getting very, very tight um, with the change in government. That's hopefully going to have a, a positive knock-on effect. But merchant customers are reluctant to take bricks into stock or materials into stock. Um, sites are not building as much as they could be. Um, they're waiting to see what's going to happen. And maybe with the change in government and the changes with the direction they're going to try and push um, house building into, we may see things change. But this year has been flat I think mm. probably the only way to describe it I think I think the one thing I said last year I think I might have said it to you before is that we need to be there to support each other and it's really important I truly mm. believe this that it's it's not about getting one up on your your mm. competitor because I think like you know to about Fulham you're in your biggest rivals without them you, you're not the same yeah, club you don't mean anything you you know you need the the Tottenham and that other team in um, South London Derby's, um, you, you, you do need that. And, you know, if Arsenal fall out of the Premier League, let's hope, um, it won't be the same for Tottenham. And um, we'll still finish fifth, but it won't be the same for Tottenham. But you, you need you need that competition there. And I think we need to work together to ensure that we all survive and get through to the next stage. So things like um, paying for materials and paying people and paying supplies, all these things are really important. And we must make sure that we're doing that to enable us all to 
make it to next next day next year. I, I speak to a lot of business owners, and, and some of them are you know small, medium sized businesses, mm. and doesn't matter what product. So, so come away from that. But you're talking talking about about, about the human end, mm. impact of it. I'm speaking to people that are 30 years in business, 40 years in business, and they're openly saying this is this is this is unusually tough, yeah. and and you're almost under pressure across every aspect of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I own a I own a successful recruitment business, so so it's all about people for me, and attracting people in the industry, retaining them. Um, Disrupting people maybe on a headhunting basis to maybe consider something different. Um, the majority of, of people I speak to are, are nervous. They're worried about their future. Their their shopping bills gone up. Their mortgage payments have gone up. Yeah. Their electricity, everything's gone up. So you know they want to do what's right for them in the career. And then you see the opportunities that are out there. Um, businesses and the leaders within businesses need to stand up and really make sure they're doing the right thing because because I can see people who talk to us Dave and their their mental health is under pressure you know they're worried they're scared they're nervous so being responsible and looking at how we can how we can implement change how we can make the sector as vibrant and as as attractive as possible in difficult circumstances yep. should never be underestimated. And the one thing I would say, whether you're having a good year, bad year, an average year, your people are valuable in equal measures. Yep. And you could say, if you're a football team or a builder's merchant and you're struggling, you know, your people are even more important because yeah, they've got to stand yeah. up and they've got to work harder, they've yeah. got to work smarter, they've got to try different tactics. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, doesn't actually mean you have to run further, you no. might do it a better pass. And I think, you know, we, we, we spend lots of hours and probably mm. me and you spend even more, more than we probably should do, hours working and thinking about work and mm. planning and so on. You spend a lot of time with the people you work with. You need to have build relationships with those people and not just the staff that are coming into your building, but the staff and the and so on and so on. The, the suppliers and mm. customers you deal with. And it's about building relationships with people. Mm. And that, for me, is so important. That's why, linking back to this, that's why we want to get our customers, that's why we want to get suppliers down here to have a nice afternoon. Yes, you talk a little about shop or you walk around a golf course and have a chat about bricks and opportunities. But actually, it's just mm. having a, a nice afternoon with someone that you actually almost yeah. like and get on with. And it's, and it's great. And, I try and I try and do that regularly. Um, it doesn't improve my golf. My golf is still average at best, but spending time with customers and suppliers is, is really important. Um, and for, for me, it's, it's what I want us to do more of, and not just taking the same customer yeah. on a regular basis, but re really engaging with our with our partners. And that's what that, that was. That was one of the that was one of the things I used to see a lot in my merchant days. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was the same. It was the same. We would just repeat to fade, repeat yeah, yeah. to fade. Yeah. We were going for it again. Yeah. And actually, it's quite nice now to see to see some of the more creative partnerships that are yeah. out there and, and seeing things. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel, but actually looking at it quite differently in terms of where, where you what, what what will you get value of? How can you help? You know, we we at Foyne Jones, and we're a very small business in comparison. You know, we're not going to have our names on these on the top of the stands. We may get we may get we may get some pitch side advertising. We may do some stuff. But so you're a sharpie on it, right? <laughs> yeah, now. No. Yeah, I, no, I, gonna, I, mean, I mean, yeah, Peter Jones was here, Floyd Jones was here, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, going back to my Grange Hill school days. I know. But, 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 it, but it's interesting because, you know, even though I'm saying that, we, we, are, we work with the local uh, food supermarket, you know, next door to us, so, so the food bank, you know, yeah. so we, we support that. We support the Parachute Regiment charity. Yeah. We support men's mental health charities. We have been involved with, over the years, Lewis Football Club, Worthing Football yeah. Club. Um, Fulham Football Club, obviously, but 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 when you when you say about if a company my size can do that yeah. and and we can actually be very proud of it, yeah. there are opportunities yeah, out absolutely. there to give back. But it's not, it's also investing into the partnership, isn't yeah. it? It's actually making it work yeah. rather than, rather than just being there. It's seeing how it can play out. But with ET Clay at the moment, what, yeah. where, where, what's what's what, what's happening right now within the business? Um, it's as a, as we touched on, it's it's been a tough year. I'm mm. not going to pretend it hasn't been a tough year. Uh, we've got good people in the business. We've had people in our business that have been there 25, mm. 30 years, which, which which shows a lot, and hopefully they'll be there for a long time to come. Uh, we've got people moving into the business, so youngsters that are coming in, inexperienced, uh, don't know bricks, and that's that's okay, because bricks are a bit weird, and why would you want to know them unless you work in the sector? 
Um, but it's more about the people. So it's, it's engaging with the right people. So we've got a new guy started recently out on the road, no brick knowledge at all, but a really genuine big football fan, and he plays semi-pro, so that's good. Um, real genuine guy who's able to go in and talk to people and start a conversation. And they're the people we're trying to engage with. So we're trying to get more fresher, different ideas, different way of thinking when we talk about being a sales person, mm. being a sales office manager, being a sales coordinator, um, or being an accounts person. It's not just having the number crunching, not just having the brick knowledge, actually having just people. Do you know, do you know that's, that's, I, I really, I want to celebrate this, this lad who's not sold a brick before, but has yeah. got the ability to build relationships yeah. and, and learn about bricks and ultimately go out there and be successful. Um, in the next half of this episode, which we're going to record tomorrow, we're going to talk about from the ground up our own careers. And actually, you know, everyone's seen the Nike CEO's career journey. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's gone viral. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. You know, from 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 sweeping up to CEO, yeah, and then yeah. you, you see the CV. But actually, I think we within the builders, merchant, and construction supplies industries have got careers like that where people have really done. So we're going to walk through that from the ground up and yeah. show where we, how we got there. But I, and I really want your view on it, Dave. So, so we're working with some amazing partnership. We've got some amazing partnerships to play, what's amazing businesses, brilliant businesses. And one of the challenges me and my recruitment team face on a daily basis, and I'm saying this for every listener out there, because they're gonna want to, uh, me to ask this question, is why do so many people only consider candidates, new employees, who have got relevant experience from their sector? You know, they don't take someone who's transferring in the industry. They don't take, take someone from the youth team who wants to be yeah. promoted to the full team. I've got it right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some of the better... If, if I'm judging someone on their moral compass, their personality, their ability, their work ethic, these, these are like 10 out of 10, yeah. but they're not making an interview because someone's going for the average person, yeah. the average girl who's done the job around the corner because yeah. it's perceived there'd yeah. be no... And, and it's perceived that they can hit the ground running. Yeah. All right. If I hear that one more, you know, why do people why do people not open their mind to the talent that's out yeah, there? Absolutely. So we're we're in the process now of um, of recruiting for a sales office manager, um, and having a brick experience is great, but realistically, is to find someone locally that's going to have brick experience, that's going to want to work in an office, is very very unlikely. So we're looking for someone with experience that we think we can mould into what we want. So bricks are, as I keep saying, bricks are weird. You're never going to be a brick expert unless you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, that's a small part of the job. Mm. Being able to manage a team, being able to understand what the, the board, the directors, the salespeople need, um, being able to look at data and analyse the data and look at trends in, in sales, look at trends in opportunities and purchases. All these things are things you can you can have, mm. but fundamentally, as I said about uh, this young guy Lloyd, who's out on the road now. Shout yeah. out to Lloyd. Yep. Soon to become a listener of the show if he, he isn't already. He, I, gu I guarantee yeah. if he isn't already, definitely yeah. will be because he loves all this stuff. So well, so is that groundsman, by the way. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, he's, I'm, he's I'm, I'm tapping him up on the way out, Charlie, but, as well. <laughs> I'm not proud. No, I, I, I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, People like him that have the ability to go into a room and start a conversation yeah. and then hold a conversation and look interested. And we went out, I went out with him a few weeks ago. Um, for the first time I've been out with him, I had a really nice chat, went to lots of different customers, lots of merchant customers in his area. And we came out of one call and I said, how do you think it went? He goes, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I didn't get much time with the guy. I said, oh, did you pick anything up for him? He goes, yeah, well, I noticed he had a, I think it was an Arsenal, an Arsenal thing on his wall. So I knew he was an Arsenal fan. Mm. Okay, what else? Oh, and he's got a um, picture of two young kids. He must have. And these are the things you pick up, mm. and these are things that you can't teach someone. No. You, just, you either have it or you don't. I, the ability I, but, to see but, that. But I used to work for an amazing sales manager, an amazing guy, an amazing guy. I still talk to him all the time. You know, I've, I've not, I've, I, I mentioned Mark Tanner a lot. I've not worked for him since, God, Jesus, I'm nearly 50, so I've not worked for him since I was 22, 23. Um, but I still call him boss. That's that's kind of the the, the, the amount the, the amount well, of respect. Like the fact he calls me a gaffer, which is yeah, it's a football analogy. Yeah, yeah, not because yeah. I'm that good. Yeah. No, but, but but things like that, you're already you're, you're already you're already up there. Yeah, yeah. But but I remember him, you know, saying to people in um, in in our sales meetings, well, you know, he'd ask about the customers and they go through their spend with support, and he'd go, "What football team they support then? 
Oh, no, I don't like football, I like golf. Okay, who's a favourite golfer? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, he, and he'd want you... He, yeah. And, and, yeah, I guess I did some of that naturally, but, but it actually made you focus much more on the person that you're talking to rather than yeah. everything else. And that's what people remember. And, and, I, and I do, you know, going, going back to the point, point, point I make is that... You know, we, we see it so often. You know, if you haven't got the experience of that software, yeah. if you haven't worked with this type of product before, yeah. we won't consider you. Yeah. And I'm going, is it that difficult? Yeah. You know, we're not operating on people. We're not flying up in the moon. No. You know, we're not. It's, it's, no. it's, you know, we, 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 we buy stuff and sell stuff. Yeah. It's, 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 as a, an it's, it's as simple as that. And yeah, as, as, I keep, as I say a lot of the time, we, we're not building hospitals. Mm. We're not doing anything overly complicated. And yeah, we just, we just need to. Be approachable, be likable. You know, it's nice to work with someone and deal with mm. someone you actually get on with. And I've got lots of, hopefully, lots of suppliers and customers that get on with me. I think I get on with them, and, and that's it. You build relationships, and it's a lot easier having good conversations and bad conversations when actually you've got a relationship there. So things like that are really important for mm. us as a business. So, so, so someone who's job seeking right now, Dave, yep. and you know they want to. They want to get noticed. What, what, would you, what advice would you give them? To, how would they get noticed? If they're standing on that centre spot and they, they want to get noticed, what, what should they be doing? Um, if they're standing on that centre spot now, yeah, I'm no, wondering, not right I'm now. wondering what they're doing right out there. Yeah, talk, but, well, you know. Uh, what about if you had a banner, one yeah. of them little ones that says, I want to I want a job, day yeah. I want to sell, clay, I want to sell you know? brick. Yeah. No, I love bricks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if you from, saw it. From a distance, I, 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 could don't, be I don't know if you saw it, Charlie, and, and I did mention it earlier, and he's trying to keep it out of the conversation, but he was at the darts, right? He yes. was at the darts yep. in Amsterdam. I was. And he had a little ET clay sign yeah. up, you know, when you're right at the side. Never miss an opportunity. Yeah. So the reason, the reason uh, we were at the darts is because um, one of the businesses within the group uh, sponsor, yeah. um, uh, Luke Humphrey, is world number one, um, and we were there. To, to watch him, which is brilliant, um, great. You mean him? I got a picture, but that was because he was walking past. <laughs> so I was, I was like screaming, yeah. but no. Um, but you know, that's one of the the businesses within the Brookability mm. Group. Um, as I mean, great, 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 um, great pick because he weren't world champion when you uh, no, when you started the sponsorship no. deal, he, were you? He, so. he, was, he was good. It was good in the game we saw, and I think he went out in the next round. Then yeah. the other the other Luke yeah. the youngster uh, went on and won the tournament. Um, yeah. yeah and he, that was, that was the final was good when they played, yeah, though, wasn't it? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great sport. Um, I think you can still call it a sport. There's not a lot of running around, but it's a great sport to watch. It's very um, very fan-led. There's not much. I've been to Ali Paddy and watched the darts from the distance in the, in the, in the stands at the back. Um, and you don't really watch much of the darts. You're drinking quite a bit. You're watching the people dressed up, singing and dancing. But it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant interaction I've, but, I've been i've been to ali Paddy a couple of yeah. times mate yeah i've been twice i've been i've been once with like the the uh the the, the fancy dress characters yeah, yeah. and i've been once in like the other side of the walking like yeah. the corporate bit yeah. so it's uh sort of seen it both and uh i mean it does rock doesn't it it, it does yeah. rock yeah it's a weird it's a weird sport and again i think that was probably pushed from people like um barry hearn mm. pushing it through and again links to the club here still do, do, you know, club. do you know one of the strangest things that uh, that happened when i was at the darts Right, on. so so you had like all the Sky TV, and this is when you had the walk on, the, you know, yeah. be politically correct. You had the, they walked on like they they walked on properly then, yeah. you know, they had the they had they had the walk on girls, they had the full. It was it was back 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 then. Laura Woods, who's now yeah. the face yeah. of the face of sports media, yeah. she was hosting, you know, so oh, she wow. was on a, yeah, you know, she, she, she often she says it, didn't she? I started with ping pong and darts when yeah. darts weren't fashionable. And so she she was hosting, and um, you know, there's some players there, and I, I don't know, and obviously going to set and I'm, they just like normal so blokes, you know, like, yeah, just like normal, yeah, 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 just like that. But on the table next to us, and, and it's, it's the weirdest thing ever, right, you had the old actor that played Martin Fowler from EastEnders, right, so... so I played football with him once. Yeah, the, the old, so not the current Martin, but the old, the yeah. old Martin, right? Random, random fact, yeah. Yeah, 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 so, so your mate, your mate from <laughs> football was there. Yeah. Your, yeah, your mate, your mate from the football team was on yeah. the table. But he, but he was with Kevin Lisby, the old Charlton striker. And they were like pals. You could see how a connection yeah. there, And yeah. I'm like, we're going like, how? Yeah, Why did you know? Yeah. Like, you know it, was just, it was just the strangest thing. Other than that, the darts was really good. I got yeah. really drunk and, yeah. uh, and, and made it back to my hotel in Camden. That, that was go. about it. So, so it, was, it was a success all along. Yeah. Now, you're not swerving my question. Go if on. we go back to the why do businesses play it safe? Why don't they take a risk? Well, what do you think? What, why do you think? Uh, let's, let's talk about your customer, yeah. your customer's customer. So, yeah. so let's talk about your builder's merchant customer. Mm. They want to bring someone in sales role. Yeah. 
Why won't they consider someone who sells mobile phones? Um, they, they, the, the problem for me, I think the problem is, is there's always that risk factor. So I think we always stick to something we've done on a regular basis, something we've always done. We, we try to come away from doing something a bit outraged, a little bit crazy. Um, for me, I quite like an element of risk. Eddie, yeah. as you said to me, it's a calculated risk. So don't go and stand in the middle of the tr on the train line and not expect to get hit by a train, but stand aside and you won't get hit by a train. I'm not sure why I want to get hit by a train at all, but yeah. what I mean is... I mean, I'll just stand in front of a yeah, station. Yeah, don't, 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 yeah, I'll just wait for the barriers yeah. to open. Yeah. But no, what I mean is it's, it's a calculated risk. So I will go out and find, if I'm looking for a sales service manager as I am, I'll look for someone who's got some sales of experience um, and can manage a team. Um, I'll look for an external salesperson that has the ability to talk. Because mm. when you're a salesperson, talking is your your weapon of choice. That's mm. what you use. That's how you get in front of people and how you open the doors up. Um, and having someone that's got that ability is almost more important sometimes than having all the brick knowledge. I've, mm. I've employed people fully brick uh, geeks mm. um, that weren't successful. Um, and then I've employed people that have got no Britain knowledge at all, that have grown and developed. I've got a guy who works for me, who covers uh, Northwest London, a guy called Clive, no Britain knowledge at all. Um, worked in, I get this wrong whenever I speak to him, but I think he worked in light fittings and light type mm. things looking up into the sky. Um, no brick knowledge, but had the ability to go and talk to people. Been hugely successful, really, really likeable guy, and has learnt his bricks. The bricks is the easy bit to learn. Yeah. So. It's about sometimes taking a, a calculated risk. Don't go and find someone who's got no knowledge of anything, but someone who's able to hold a conversation. And again, when I interview people, the interviews and having worked in recruitment many, many, many years ago. Is you any good at it? What's my cell bricks? I've answered your own question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. having done that, and when I sit with people... Oh, on mate, the, mate, I'm, don't worry, mate. We both, we both wanted to be out there, yeah, didn't no, we? No, no. <laughs> so let's be honest. Dodgy knees, we, we, dodgy we, knees. We all, we all wanted um, to play. But no, yeah. but re realistically, the, sitting in front of someone and asking questions, I tend to have a, a general conversation. Yeah. So when I sat down with Lloyd, we spoke about everything from family to football mm. to, to golf to, to work, his experience that he did with other football clubs and what he's done with him teaching. And there yeah. was no similarities, no similarities whatsoever to being an mm. area sales manager. But will he be successful? Absolutely, because yeah. he's got the hunger, the desire, and the want to do it, and is a really likable and, and, bloke. And that, so, so everything there, are like they're, they're key aspects of an individual's employability. I, I work with, and at the moment I'm working with more and more people, and, and we, we've seen it. We were talking about what's happened with ISG. We talk, you know, you see what happened with CTD Tiles, which, mm. you know, you're seeing, you're seeing amazing established businesses. You're seeing horrific job loss, and we're dealing with this at the moment. And it's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to give some of my time up when I can. You know, to, I gave a couple of hours up yesterday on a Sunday, and I've, I'm doing it where I can to try and talk to people, and just because there's only so many hours in the day, and you're there. But, we, but for me, like one of the greatest opportunities I've got to, to talk is when I'm travelling. Mm. You know, if I'm if I'm in the jam jar and I'm driving, yep. I've got, you know, like last night I went come up from Brighton, so it's a couple of hours, um, and I just thought, well, what can I do? I'm going to listen to talk sport. There was a game on. Charlie, yesterday. Uh, that, yeah, yesterday happens? afternoon. Yeah, we can talk about it tomorrow. Okay. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about yeah, yeah. it. We'll talk about it second half tomorrow. Um, but just the last minutes. But but somehow I started doing. I'm thinking like, well, if this was if this was a normal Monday to Friday, yeah. I'd be on the blower. Because yeah, right? yeah, you're reading yeah. people when you're travelling, yeah. aren't you? So I'm like, actually, I'm going to turn this on his head a little bit, yeah. put it out there, does so anyone want to chat? Yeah. Now, only one person got in touch with me yesterday, and I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll give me a number, I'll ring you when I'm driving. So I've got, onto the, got, got on the car. I spent about an hour and ten minutes talking to him. Like, an hour and ten minutes. Yeah. And we spoke about, you know, what, how he felth when he after he's been redundant, which was tough. Uh, we spoke about different career options. Yeah. There was a couple of vacancies of mine, which, which he would he, he liked to go for, so he explored them. Gave him some feedback on, you know, the, the modern job seeker. He gave him some feedback on his CV. Gave him some feedback on LinkedIn. You know, just that sort of stuff. But but hopefully, and he, he sent me a lovely message to say thanks. Hopefully, it just made him feel yeah. a bit more valued about yeah. about what he can do. Now, on that, the two main things I focus on are being being 
ready to find a new job, so having the tools you need, i.e. the profile, the, 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 how to apply, but then also your mindset, you know, because because the mental aspect of job seeking, and you see professional sports talk about it, you know, you can have all the ability in the world, but if your head's not right, yeah. you know, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not hitting capacity. That's the same in a job seeking situation. Um, you go to an interview and you fluff your lines, you, you, you ain't yeah. gone well, but yeah. if you're prepared, you've got more chance of fluffing, you've got, more, you've got less chance yeah, of that yeah. happening. Absolutely. You've got much less chance of it happening. So, so again, with your support as a sponsor, that from the ground up, we're going to focus on on that Super. this 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 series. I'm going to I've been asked to do it. I'm diving into some of the some of the more controversial subjects, and another one we're going to talk about, which uh, which I think is really relevant, and again something we challenge is the employer's reaction when someone has too many jobs. You know, so um, let's say for example, you did. Six months at Leighton Orient, got yep. loaned out to Millwall, went to Colchester, played at South End. You know, you, you, you're you building up a reputation, yeah. perhaps. In careers, yeah, people, I, I talk to a lot of Jumping employers that go, oh, yeah, yeah, looks like he's got experience, but you know, he's had eight jobs in the last eight years. And I go, well, he's done well at eight interviews. Yeah. You know, she's done well at eight yeah. interviews. So, so where, what's your thoughts on that, first of all? If if you're, you get an application through, and let's, let's, let's break it more realistic, yeah. someone's had three jobs in the last five years. I, th I think historically... We'd or one always, for three different companies. Yeah, we, we'd always look at a CV, and unfortunately your CV is your, is your calling card. It's what yeah. you look at. The first thing you look at and you go, I'm going to make a, a gut decision based on this. Mm. And if you see lots, your initial thought is, mm, that's, that's not good, that's not a great sign. However, if you're willing, and this is the important bit, if you're willing to delve in a little bit deeper and find out why, because there's lots and lots of reasons why someone could be in a job for six months. It could be so many different things. It could be that the, they thought it was going to be X and it turned out to be Y. The mm. boss was horrible, personal circumstances, any change of location, anything can change as to why you've moved from one to the other. It could be that it was a temporary job, mm. but they didn't put temporary on the CV. And they've done lots and lots of temp jobs to find what they wanted because they were moving from the north down to the south, they wanted to find out where they wanted to live, so they found different jobs in different areas till they found the right one. And um, for, for me, I would look at the CV, um, I would look a little bit deeper than saying, oh, there's three jobs in six, mm. in five years, because I think actually three jobs in five years, that's, that's, yeah. that's okay. If there's sort of five jobs in a year, I'd question, yeah. or three jobs in a year, or three jobs in two years, I'd look a little bit concerning. However, I always, as I did last week, CVs that came through to me, I picked up the phone and made a phone call to engage mm. with that person. And on the back of that, I'll then make a, a judgment call on a, on, a first, on a first phone call, rather than looking at the CV mm. and discarding it instantly. So it, it sometimes, it's, as I said, CVs are really important and CV writing, and you see CV, you must see hundreds of CVs all day, every day. Hate them. And I know you do a yeah. different way of doing yeah. it. You're sort of engaging with your, your, your customers, but engaging with the, the, um, the, the job seekers differently. CV writing is really important and having a CV and things for me, basics, two page CVs is a maximum. Mm. Any more than two pages, I'm all, yeah. I'm a little bit lost yeah. anyway. I'm a little bit I, bored. I think, it, I think, it, it I think, it, I think it's relative as well, isn't it? You know, you can, you can have a one page CV with a sporting portfolio if, yeah. if it's relevant yeah, yeah, for the position. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, you've got what you said there, and it's important because I say this to people daily. You, that first impression, that what it what it makes is is you use you call it your calling card. For me, it's that moment of truth because actually, if if you if you're getting lost in translation after 15, 30 seconds, you're not going to keep yeah. reading. You, no. You've already gone. Now you may be the exception, Dave, where you say, "No, I am going to work that out a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to try and figure it out, and I'm going to look into that." We'll, we'll do this tomorrow when we're in the studio, Charlie, and we'll get Charlie's take on that as a young professional who has freelanced, who has been run his own business, yeah. who's got different gigs going on. You know, how does he portray that to a potential employer? Because it could look like he's, he's jumping all over the place, yeah. but actually he hasn't been. And also, I'm going to get Charlie, he doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to do, I'll tell him on the way out, um, but I'm going to get him to talk about, you know, where he sees his long career and the importance of a work-life balance. Um, 
is traveling and working as a digital nomad and you know doing different things to get life world experiences that may mean more to him yeah. than like me and you we're yeah. going to do like a 10 year stretch 20 year stretch and get a watch and think oh yeah well thank you very much do you know what I mean thank you for your service yes you counting down as well yeah I'm, 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 I'm 50 in February mate do you know what I mean I've, I'm, I've really got to work on the yeah. exit plan yeah, to, yeah, there you go anyone anyway, want to help get in touch um, but yeah, yeah it, it, you know do you know what it's, it's really surreal though like, like, like I'll be turning 50 in February and I'm all of a sudden I'm like I'm proper old now. I'm proper middle-aged. Um, I must about to say no. No, 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 no you're not. I know you're, I know you're, four, I know you're four or five years below me, mate. Aren't you know, five, six, six years. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. That's, yeah. that's so bad, bad numbers. Yeah. No. What's your five anyway. k time at the moment? At the moment, yeah. or best ever, because you know, <laughs> when, when we've got an injury, it's yeah, hard to all right, run. All right, all right. <laughs> you, you'll, do, you'll always do me on short distances. I'll do right. you on long, mate. We'll that's see. all right. We'll well, okay. So. Is it, I'm going to get Charlie's view as a young professional yep. on what, what he wants out of his career yep. and actually try and combine that with your view as a sales director, as a director yep. and what you're looking for from an employee. Because that's the other side, there, there's disconnects. Yep. Um, the other thing we'll talk about, and again, we're, we've got to wrap up soon, Charlie. We'll have, that's this episode going, yeah. yeah so, but the other one we'll talk about is the career gap. Yep. You know, because that's, that's such an opportunity, the career. You know, people saying, oh no, they've, they've got a gap in their career. We've got one at the moment, um, guys going for a director's role, absolutely amazing, amazing candidate, was rejected, first of all, because there was like a two, three year gap. Um, when you find that, I'm not going to share it on here, but when yeah. you find out why there was a gap and what he's yeah. been through, yeah, yeah. he's probably more employable yeah. than, than any one, of, one, one I've ever spoken to in yeah. terms of resilience yeah. and courage yeah. and, and that. But people weren't sick considering him because of that. That's just, it's mad. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. mad. And, and that's the side of, I think, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on that this series. Yeah. Um, getting into those, those difficult questions, because a lot of the listeners are saying to me, like, yeah, it's great, but... We, need, we want to see why we don't get considered. I want to know why I messed that interview up and what, why, why can't I apply for that job? Don't, you know, don't get me wrong, if, it, if, it, if it's a job that needs specific, uh, definitely won't need to walk on the pitch, Dave, will they? It's going again, isn't it? There yeah. we go, mate. But uh, car park's underground, Charlie. Very sweet, eh? Sweet, eh, mate? <laughs> you won't get wet. Straight out. Have to when you get wet. But, but we are going to dive this series and this episode into those key areas. So from... Uh, for in Jones' perspective, um, thank you to you and the business for, for spon sponsoring, sponsoring this series. We're going to invite some of your customers, we're going to invite some of your contacts, we're yeah. going to get them on to share their stories. We will include some football and sports related conversation as we go along. Um, and we'll make it as much fun as we can for the listeners. So Absolutely. I think that really does bring us to the end of today's episode. We're going to go again with the second half tomorrow. Um, just before we wrap up, I want to... Um, I did a post about it, and it's, it's quite special to me, but on Friday, it was the, um, we celebrated the weekend, you see the jumps going on, but it's the 80 year anniversary of, um, of Arnhem, and uh, Bridge Too Far, which yeah. was made famous for Bridge Too Far, but, but, but on Friday, um, the last message from the 2nd Battalion and the Parachute Regiment, Regiment was sent from Arnhem Bridge, mm. and, it, and it basically was like this, Charlie, it went, out of ammo, God save the king. And, um, you know, the reinforcers didn't come in time. They, they couldn't hold the bridge. And it was uh, one of the most um, poignant moments in history. 80 years later, 80 years later, right now, my youngest son is serving with a 2nd Battalion of the British Pasha Parachute Regiment. He's deployed in the USA at the moment on exercise. And I just think that we need to look back and, and remember everyone who was involved in the Second World War, everyone who was involved in that operation, Operation Market Garden. They were, without a doubt, our greatest generation. And uh, that's what I want to end this episode on. So quite a poignant way to, ep to end the episode. Thank you so much for listening. That was Season 8, Episode 1, The Foy and Jones Show, From the Ground Up, sponsored by E.T. Clay. Super. Cheers,